want to preach a message I've called How to Be Prepared for Death. I know it's an unusual sort of a subject, but we want to look into it now. We need to understand we're all going to die as we know, and it's because of sin that we die. But now, why am I actually preaching on this subject now? One reason is because I've, had, I've got a nephew who just committed suicide, actually, about a week ago, roughly. And uh, I don't know whether he's in heaven or hell. I've got no idea. I don't know whether he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ at the last minute or not. But as far as I know, he hadn't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ most of his life. But whether he's in heaven or hell, I don't know yet. I'll only know when I get there myself, get to heaven myself. But the point is this, we all need to be, to be in heaven. And God wants to save your soul. He wants us all to be in heaven now. So how to be prepared for death? So first of all, uh, why is there such a thing as death anyway? Romans 6.23, the first part says, The wages of sin is death. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we see that the wages of sin is death. That's why we have death on this earth. I'm sure you've been to someone's funeral, a loved one or a friend or a mate at work or whatever it might be. We need to understand that one day we are going to also go by way of death. We're going to leave this earth. We're going to leave this planet. And my concern is this, that you will leave prepared for eternity. In other words, be prepared for death. Now death is coming to all of us, as we've said, and we know that. It's obvious. But God wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. And that's why we come here with the gospel of Jesus Christ unto you, knowing that he's the only way to heaven. The only way we can get to heaven is through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried. Praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, James chapter 1 verses 14 and 15 but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, that's a strong desire, and enticed. And when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. It's basically saying, saying very similar, but the wages of sin is death. Very similar. And this is what we deserve. This is because we are sinners when we're born into this world. God wants to give you his salvation. God wants you to be saved. God wants you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour so that you can be in heaven. He wants you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, as I said, as your Saviour, so that your sins can be forgiven. He also wants to give you His righteousness. Now, His righteousness, God's righteousness, comes to us as a free gift from God when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about the person of Christ. That's who we're concerned about this afternoon. We want to bring you the person of Jesus Christ, the only way to heaven. Yes, sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28, and God said, let us make man in our image, this is way back in Genesis, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. We've got to understand that. This day and age we live in, we need to know that. Male and female, there's nothing else, my friend. It's either male or female. People are getting confused in this world that we live in. There's only male and female. Yes, and God uh, blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. This is the reason there's male and female. So that there could be reproduction. So that the animals could reproduce. So that the birds and whatever, all these things, and so, so we could reproduce as well. Of course, it's supposed to be in the bonds of marriage. A man should leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. 
And so, when they come together physically, obviously, after being married, well, then they produce children from that intimate relationship that they have, one with another, that's male and female. This is the, the design of God. And, of course, people are throwing everything on, the, on its head, you know, in this world that we live on, in... You know, they're just confusing things, they're making it very awkward and unusual, and this is why they have sodomy and all this sort of rubbish, which is absolute abomination in the sight of God. But the design of God is a male and a female, is man and woman, be married, they come together physically to produce children. That is God's uh, design. Yes, and uh, God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 2, verses 7 to 9, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst or in the middle of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Moving on to Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 to 18, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that uh, the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. In other words, he's going to make someone to help the man that is fit for him, that meets his, his, um, uh, you know, his desires and his uh, needs, whatever they might have been. Verses 21 to 25, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. So here we see the first operation. And the first operation is actually uh, performed by the Lord God Almighty upon Adam. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken uh, out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Genesis chapter 3, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst or in the middle of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Really, that wasn't true. The Lord didn't say, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. He said, In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. There was no, you know, haziness about it. The Lord had said this, and of course the devil was uh, trying to twist the word of God. Yes, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So here he tells a flat out lie. He says, Ye shall not surely die. So he's contradicting what God had said. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So here's the devil. He comes along and he tells Eve a flat out lie. 
ye shall not surely die. And he's been deceiving people ever since. He's very good at deceiving people. I wonder, have, have you been deceived? Are you still deceived at this point in time? You see, you need to see that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. But he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. For God doth know that in the... These are the words of the devil. For God doth know that in the day uh, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. In other words, he, uh, Eve gave the fruit also to, to uh, Adam, and they both ate. And they shouldn't have, because the Lord had said, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God had warned them, do not partake of that tree, do not eat that fruit or whatever it was on the tree. But they went ahead and did it, you know, like the wet paint sign. You just touch it just to see if it really is wet. And that's, you know, that's human nature. You know, we have a sinful nature inside of us that causes us to want to sin, go our own way, do our own thing. But at the end of the day, we're going to end up dying and going down to hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. And that's why we're here this Arvo. To give you another opportunity of getting right with God and having forgiveness for your sins. Yeah, so it says here, And when the woman saw, yes, we've already had that, sorry, uh, they both ate, and then um, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves, uh, uh, sorry, and they sewed fig leaves together. Oh. I got that a bit wrong with my printing. Anyway, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now these aprons weren't sufficient to cover their nakedness. Uh, and when, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now this is a mistake. No one can hide from the presence of the Lord. He is present everywhere at the same time. It's called omnipresence. He's, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time, as in the present everywhere at the same time. So we can't run away and hide from God. We are personally responsible before God concerning our sin. And this is why we need forgiveness for those sins. If we do not receive forgiveness for our sins, we'll end up dying and going down to hell. And God does not want that for you, my friend. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So Adam and Eve couldn't hide behind the trees from God. Because there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide from God. He sees everything and he knows everything. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. See, even with the fig leaves, they were still naked in God's sight. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Where well, I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. In other words, he's blaming God. The thing is, he had a choice to make. You know, sin is a choice. It's a bad choice. And we've made that time and time again. I'm sure that you can, you know, attest to the fact that you've made wrong choices. And so have I. I'll be the first one to admit that. But the thing is, we, we need salvation. We need forgiveness for our sins. And the only way is through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, upon the cross. The cross. The Christ of God, the chosen one of God. God is anointed. The Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. And He wants to be your Saviour this other, my friend. 
Will you come to the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you put your faith alone in Him, the one whom to know is life eternal? Eternal life is not found in a man-made religion. It's found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think of a man called Simeon. He was in the temple and he lifted up the Lord Jesus Christ when he was a little baby and he said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace for thine eyes have seen thy salvation. See, salvation is found in a person. You won't find it in a man-made religion. Man-made religion will take us down to hell, my friend. It doesn't matter how many generations you have followed a certain religion. It will never, ever save us. Only Christ can save us. And that's why we preach. When we're gospel preaching, we preach concerning the person of Jesus Christ. He's the only one that really matters. He's the one that you've got to come to know. He's the one that you've got to receive. You see, he came unto his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him, that is, the Lord Jesus Christ, to them, gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13, uh, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled of me, and I did eat. In other words, the woman is blaming the devil. Now, we're very good at the blaming game, aren't we? You know, it's everyone's fault but mine. Is it about time we owned up to our own sin before God? It's called repentance. It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God, yes, I realize that I am a sinner. And then what you need to do, you need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God, to be saved, to have your sins forgiven. That's what God wants this Arvo, that your sins would be forgiven, my friend. You have a great need of salvation. And the only way that we can be saved is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, now he's talking to the devil, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon my belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. In other words, there's always going to be enemies. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head. Now this is speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ who would eventually come and be the one that would bruise, or actually it means crush the head of the devil when he was crucified upon the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ has victory over the devil. At the place called Calvary, he won that victory. Of course he was uh, more powerful than him before, anyway. But the thing is, he crushed his head. And it says here, a mouse shall bruise his heel. In other words, in crushing the head of the devil, he actually bruised his heel. So it cost him a lot to do this, to go into the, the article of death, to go through death that we might live. And of course, he's risen from the dead the third day to give us life so that you and I can have life in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we put our faith alone in him. Yes, unto the woman he said, uh, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And any woman that's had a child knows that it's pain and suffering when they're about to give birth, or even through the pregnancy, obviously. Uh, you know, there's pain, and it, you know, you get sickness and all sorts of stuff go on because of the changes in your body, because you have another life inside of you. You know, they say, it's my body, about the business of abortion, a load of rubbish, it's another body. It's another body. We've got no right to kill somebody else. So abortion, yes, it is murder. But the point is this, there is suffering that goes on when someone is in labour and someone is expecting a child and also, obviously, when they're in labour. It's hard work giving birth, not that I know personally because I'm a man, but I'm sure the women would uh, tell you that it's, it's hard work and it's painful. Yes, yeah, so it says here, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 
And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy faith, face uh, shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. See, the Lord God made Adam out of dust, made him out of dirt, and then breathed into his nostrils, as we saw before, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so this is why we're personally responsible before God. And we're really responsible of what we do in the Lord Jesus Christ. Really, we've got to understand that we're in big trouble with God because of our sin. But God wants to forgive you of all of your sins this hour, my friend, and that's why we're here. We are concerned about your soul. We want you to be saved. And the only way you can be saved is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Adam called his uh, wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now Eve means life giver. Verse 21, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us. You see, we've got to understand also that God is made up of three persons. It's the one God, but we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's why it says in the Bible, the man is become as one of us, because we have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, the man is, uh, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden, the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. See, God didn't want us to live in a eternal, uh, live for eternity in a sinful way. In terms of, you know, because Adam and Eve had taken of the, of the, uh, the tree that they shouldn't have partaken of, and then they, they went into sin. God didn't want us to live uh, or exist forever in that sinful condition. So he barred them from the way of the tree of life. So he didn't want uh, people to exist forever in a sinful condition. And that's why, of course, he sent the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one that we bring to you. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And so this here is, uh, this here is like, basically it's like uh, security guards. That's the uh, cherubim, the flaming sword, which turned every way, keep the way of the tree of life. Now, uh, John chapter 8, verses 23 to 20 and 24, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. He's talking to the people here. This is the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. I am from above, ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. Now this is what we don't want as gospel preachers when we come here to bring you the message of salvation. We do not want you to die in your sins. We want you to be saved and that's why we come here this hour to give you another opportunity of getting right with God. For if you believe not that I am he or I am, you shall die in your sins. Now I am means I exist or it is, uh, it is I. It's actually a reference back to the Old Testament to the time when the Lord God said to, to um, I think it was Moses, Who shall I say sent me? And he said, I say I am sent me unto you. And so this is the Lord God Almighty. He's the eternal self-existent one, along with, along with, the, Father, along with the Son and the Holy Spirit. They are eternal. They've always been there. So you and I had a time when we were born. But the Lord God has always been there. 
And so he wants you to have everlasting life. Now the only way to everlasting life is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that can save your soul. Now, the uh, Romans 6.23, the last part, because I quoted the first part before, for the wages of sin is dead, and that's the bad news, but this is the last part, says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what we need to understand, there's only life found in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no other way to heaven. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, he didn't say a way, he said, I am the way. That's exclusive. The only way we can get to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one that you've got to come to this other, to be saved, to receive forgiveness for your sins. It's only in the person of Jesus Christ and him alone. Yes, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which uh, I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory, uh, yeah, if ye keep in memory, uh, what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all, this is first of all in importance, this is very, very, extremely important. Get this. First of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. It's important to understand those three facts. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures but in his death he had to shed his precious blood in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins so if you come in repentance toward God that is a change of mind simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ God promises you everlasting life. And that's our, that's our prayer here this afternoon, that you would come to faith in Christ, that you would put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just a couple more verses, and I'm done, I'll head over there, because there's more people over there anyway. Colossians 1 verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood. That's important. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ had been shed upon the cross so that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins. Yes, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I wonder can you say that, that your sins have been forgiven. You've come to faith in Christ. You've come in repentance toward God. You've understood that you're a sinner and you've admitted that to God. And then... You put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have a great night. God bless you. Go, Donald. Here, Acts chapter 20 and verse 21 says, Testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks or Gentiles, repentance toward God. That's important. We've got to come and admit that we're a sinner before God and then faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder how you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, are you a child of God? Are you on your way to heaven? Are you still on that broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? God wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. Hope you've understood the message. We're sinners. We're heading down to hell. God does not want that. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified for us. He died upon the cross, shed his precious blood, and if you believe upon him, your soul will be saved. Well, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you.